Welcome back to School of the Rock. It's me, Sandra. Now, you may be wondering what I'm doing on this beautiful, sunny island. Well, I'm at the Sunny Island Surfing Competition, and I'll be at the competition for the next few weeks. Now, looking at this beach, you're probably wondering how surfing will happen on such calm waters. Well, this beach is just where I'm staying. The actual competition takes place on the other side of the island. But to be honest, I prefer this calmer water. It's so relaxing and a wonderful place to enjoy my morning coffee. Hey, do you know which Bible character probably preferred calmer water too? Any guesses? <laughs> well, I'm going to give you a hint. He also didn't like big fish, and his name rhymes with Mona. Shout it out if you know the answer. Yep, it's Jonah. You know, at surfing competitions, I have seen a lot of wipeouts that have led to defeat. But sometimes I have seen surfers wipe out and then come back and win the competition. You know, as Christians, we'll sometimes have wipeouts too. The wipeouts I'm talking about are sinful choices that can lead to hard consequences. But we serve an awesome God who can turn those wipeouts into victories. Now, over the next few weeks, between the scheduled surfing events, I will be sharing Jonah's story with you. Jonah is the perfect example of someone who had an epic wipeout when he tried to run away from God. But in the end, God turned his failure into amazing victory. Let's begin by saying today's big idea together. We can't run from God. Now today we'll be digging into the first chapter of the book of Jonah. And the Bible is the word of God and everything in the Bible is true. And God uses the Bible to speak to us. So let's listen carefully to what he has to say to us today in story of Jonah. Jonah was a prophet. That meant he was one of God's special messengers, and God used him to tell people the things God wanted them to know. One day, God spoke to Jonah and told him, go to the great city of Nineveh, preach against it. The sins of its people have come to my attention. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, the people there were Assyrians and enemies of Jonah's people, the Israelites. So Jonah ran away from the Lord. He decided to go to Tarshish instead. So he went down to the port of Joppa. There he found a ship that was going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went on board. Then he sailed for Tarshish. He was running away from the Lord. What Jonah didn't realize is that you can't run away from God. Then, the Lord sent a strong wind over the Mediterranean Sea. A wild storm came up. It was so wild that the ship was in danger of breaking apart. All the sailors were afraid. Each one cried out to his own God for help. They threw the ship's cargo into the sea. They were trying to make the ship lighter. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone below deck. There he lay down and fell into a deep sea. He wasn't aware of the storm. The captain went down to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call out to your God for help. Maybe he'll pay attention to what's happening to us, that we won't die. The sailors said to one another, Someone's to blame for us getting into all this trouble. Let's cast lots to find out who it is. So they did, and Jonah was picked. They asked him, what terrible things have you done to bring all this trouble on us? Tell us, what do you do for a living? Where do you come from? What is your country? What people do you belong to? Then Jonah said to them, I'm Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven. He is the God who made the sea and the land. Jonah told them he was running away from the Lord. Then they became terrified. So they asked him, how could you do a thing like that? The wind and the waves of the sea were becoming much stronger. So the men said to Jonah, What should we do to make the sea calm down? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied. Then it will become calm. 
I know it's my fault that this terrible storm has come upon you. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to land. But the stormy sea was too rough for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord Jonah's God. Oh, Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death. Oh, Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the storm you see the men saw what had happened, and the sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power. They offered a sacrifice to him, and they made promises to him. Then the Lord sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. What a story, eh? It must have been very scary for the sailors on that ship. Now, they didn't know the one true God, but even they seem to know that you can't run away from him when they asked Jonah, how could you do something like that? Jonah disobeyed God when he tried to run away from what God was telling him to do. The thing is, God knows everything, so there was nowhere that Jonah could go to get away from God. There was a pretty big consequence for Jonah when he did this. Stick with me over the next few weeks, and you'll see how God turned Jonah's wipeout into a victory. <laughs> Whenever we disobey God by not doing something he wants us to do or by doing something we know he doesn't want us to do, it's like we're running from God, and that's sin, and there are consequences for our sin. Now, you're probably never going to be swallowed by a great big fish when you run away from God, but you might end up losing screen time or end up in detention at school. And even if you don't get caught by your parents or by your teacher, you still may end up feeling sad or guilty or, or distant from God. It doesn't feel good at all. God doesn't want us to run from him, but he wants us to stay close to him and to be obedient to him because he wants what's best for us. And staying close to God and being obedient to him is always what's best. Consequences are uncomfortable, but it's one of the ways that God helps to bring us back to him because he loves us too much to let us go. He is always wanting us to come back to him and to turn our wipeouts into victories. Well, it's time for me to head over to the surfing competition now, so I'm going to say goodbye. But make sure you come back next week to hear more about the story of Jonah. And remember, God loves you, and I do too. Bye-bye, and happy surfing.